and welcome to The Resourceful Woman. Today I'm going to be doing my very first product review. I'm going to be going over household cleaning products, uh, some of the changes that I've been making, and some of the things that you might want to try if you're trying to reduce plastic in your home. First up, here's a change that I've been building up over quite a long time. Um, I'm sure that in most households we have plastic Tupperware containers, things for um, putting away and preserving food. A lot of my plastic containers tend to just disappear or walk about or go missing at some point or another. Um, I was doing my best to try to keep them with color coordinated lids and things like that to try to help me match them. As I was thinking about going out and buying some more Tupperware, I realized that I was actually already bringing in quite a lot of plastic uh, tubs into my house via takeaways. So. I mean, every once in a while, my family, we get a takeaway. It comes um, in these kind of little plastic containers, um, and most of the time, you just throw them away. I know that my local recycling program doesn't accept this type of plastic, so it would just go straight in the bin. I have been um, washing these and reusing them for many months now, and um, they're just as effective as the store-bought uh, Tupperware containers in terms of preserving food. I use them for all kinds of things. Um, sometimes if I'm going to one of those package-free shops to buy my dry goods, um, you know, rice, dried fruit, uh, coffee, this and that and the other, um, I can take along these plastic containers and they're actually a lot lighter weight than, say, taking glass. Um, I also do bring these, um, these glass containers or I refill them with things. Um, when I'm starting to run out of um, packaged products, I um, then chuck whatever is remaining into glass and use this as a reminder to myself that the next time I run out of rice or coffee or quinoa or something, um, instead of to buy it at a traditional store, to go to a package-free store and refill these containers there. One more thing, a little trick that I've realized about reusing these um, takeaway containers is that they all kind of look alike, but a lot of them are slightly different sizes with slightly different lids. Um, and if you're anything like me, you might struggle with always matching the lids to the correct tub. Um, I've started just going around and writing numbers at the on the lid and on the corresponding tub so that um, when I have my things all stored away, I can very easily find the correct lid for the correct tub. Um, this is such a simple thing to do. Why didn't I think of it years ago? Next up, another food storage uh, solution that has come about with for me over time is um, stopping buying these, uh, these plastic resealable bags, Ziploc bags. Um, every once in a while, I will get one of these. Um, often, I get them in uh, packages that my mother sends from overseas. She'll wrap something up in Ziploc bags, and I will save them um, in a drawer and then reuse them whenever I can. And then eventually, when they kind of wear out or get holes, I'll finally throw them away. Um, I did have this, uh, this package of plastic bags as well, sandwich bags, um, which I bought over here. And I've actually, I've completely stopped using these in the last few months. I have a few left that I'm sure I will uh, use up eventually, but then I intend to never buy any more uh, plastic uh, sandwich bags. Instead, uh, the first thing I did was I got these, um, these just paper bags. Um, it's just same size. Fits a sandwich, fits any other kind of, you know, small food item that if you're wrapping things up to, you know, on the go for, for your lunch or anything, um, you can definitely paper work just as well as plastic. It doesn't, you know, if it's only for a few hours or whatever, it doesn't need to be, uh, you know, completely waterproof or anything else. Um, so that is one option. And then another thing that I would have normally used plastic bags for would be for like kind of um, wrapping up things at, you know at home like say I have a package of chicken breasts and I don't cook them all I want to put some back in the fridge um, I can either use the um, takeaway containers that I've already saved 
or um, I can use these silicon um, things. They're uh, they're just kind of re basically reusable uh, Ziploc bags. They come in different sizes. Um, they're a little bit expensive uh, to to buy initially. I think this one might have been about like twelve pounds, and this one was maybe seven pounds. Um, but I've only bought the two. And these are all I'll ever buy. I just, um, I use them, I wash them. I do hand wash them. I'm pretty sure they're not meant to go um, in the in the dishwasher. But um, so far it's been great, you know. I use up half a package of bacon. I stick the other half in this um, silicone Ziploc thing. It's nice and flat. It doesn't take up too much space in the fridge. And then, you know, a few days later I pull it out again and um, use what's inside and wash it and it's pretty great. So I highly recommend um, ditching your plastic sandwich bags and food storage bags uh, and going for either something uh, paper and um, either recyclable or compostable like this or something that you can wash and reuse for a long, long time like this. When it comes to kitchen cleanup, I have recently made a massive change that is already having a huge impact for me in terms of waste and reducing my, my waste um, as I am cleaning and then cooking and then cleaning again in the kitchen every evening. Um, one thing is I would use a lot of kitchen roll or paper towel as <laughs> some, some of us call it. Um, I mean, you know, I just clean off the, the countertops and then I, you know, dry them off with a piece of kitchen towel. And then I would tear off another piece of kitchen towel to, um, you know, use just to kind of like wipe my hands if I'm handling meat or handling anything sticky. I would just kind of like wipe my hands off on something. Um, I'd use a bit of kitchen towel for this. I'd use a bit of kitchen towel for that. On any given night, I would go through like, an enormous amount of, of kitchen roll for various things um, and at the same time I would be going through maybe three or four Dettol wipes. Um, I would kind of wipe down the, the kitchen counters uh, before I would start cooking and then um, after I would finish again and I would um, you know go through several of these on any given night and you know you just you pick them out you use them once you throw them away don't think about it too much um, but they've actually got like a lot of synthetic fibers in them they're not completely gonna break down you know at least kitchen towel I could always you know as long as it didn't have bleach or anything in it I could um, stick it in my compost pile but the Dettol wipes would always go straight in the bin, which is not great. So um, I have recently decided to go with a, with a different solution. Um, I went out to some thrift stores with my lovely friend Darren, and I was on the hunt for some flannel or brush cotton sheets, as well as just 100% regular cotton sheets. Um, and I actually managed to find some really good deals. I got one... Uh, good size flannel sheet. It was probably for like a baby's bed or something given the, the size of it that I bought for 30p and then I got um, another good size piece of sheeting that was actually for free. It was left in a bucket outside of, um, of a charity shop and it was I couldn't even tell like what this thing originally had been but I've cut it up and used it for something else now. Um, and then I got some more fabric from, uh, I think it was, oh, it was some, um, a remnant of some felt from a, a fabric shop that uh, I got for maybe like a pound. So I think for like about a, a pound 30 in total, I got stuff that I can use and use and use over and over again. So what I've done is I've taken these bits of fabric and sewn them together so that they have um, kind of the, the thicker, softer flannel on one side and then the thinner kind of sh just regular bench sheet material on the other side. And I just kind of sewed them into, you know, basic rectangles um, on the bits that there was just a little bit of remnant left. They might have gotten, um, you know, slightly wonky in their, you know, in their shapes and everything doesn't even matter. I mean, these are just for cleanup. And I've started using these and it's amazing 
how much better they are than the kitchen towel and the Dettol wipes. Like, oh my gosh. I, you know, I use one of these in a single night and then I can throw it in the, in the laundry and, you know, I'll wash it and it'll come back and I'll use it again. Um, the only thing I really have to worry about is if I've used this with like actual bleach, because sometimes I, I bleach my countertops, um, then I don't want to throw these into a load with like a lot of my other laundry so that it doesn't wind up bleaching my clothes or anything like that. But if I'm just using like basic, you know, white vinegar or a regular kitchen spray, um, it should be fine. And it actually, it serves a dual purpose. It both, you know, I can clean off the countertops, get it all done, da 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 da, on one side of this nice thick fabric. And then on the other side, I can keep it to the side and as I'm cooking and chopping and yada yada yada, I just dry my hands on the, on the reverse of the exact same piece. And so it's really serving the dual purpose of things that I was using multiple of and throwing away every single night. So um, this has been a boon for me. Now, um, I actually also have some um, floor wipes that are similar to the Dettol wipes and they go on this mop. And again, it's like any time I kind of, I mop the kitchen or I mop the bathrooms, um, I'm using these wipes and putting them on and then I'm like throwing them away and they're, they're made from all of these synthetic fibers. There's no way that they're going to break down. So I used that felt that I mentioned and, um, and then made these kind of like, double, you know, it's, it's two layers of the bed sheet and then one little, one thick square of the felt. I don't know if you can see that there. And it's the exact same size of the old floor mop bits and it fits right into my Swiffer mop like that and I can just put some um, put some liquid put some soap down on the floor and um, and mop with this and then take it off and stick it in the wash alongside all of these other great um, wipes that I've used up and then they'll you know they'll come out clean and perfectly usable again. So um, this is a change that I only just made like in the last couple of weeks and it's I'm already feeling like a massive difference in the amount of stuff that I'm throwing away. And considering that I, only, I spent less than two pounds on the whole lot of all of this um, and now I'm never gonna buy Dettol wipes again probably. Um, I'm just thinking, wow, this is like a massive cost savings, um, and I feel really, really good about it. Another change that I've been slowly starting to make is whenever um, some sort of like, um, you know, heavy duty plastic um, thing in the house, you know, breaks or is grungy or is no longer usable, I actually um, try to switch it out for something that is uh, biodegradable. So for instance, um, you know, you go through kind of like regular kitchen sponges, the kind you buy in, in big packs from the shop. Um, I've actually recently found these, um, these coconut scrubs. They're made out of um, just like coconut. Uh, you can have a look. <laughs> um, stays fresh, lasts for months, uses less soap, but produces more suds. Um, I've been using these for, well, really about a week. And you can see that, like, it's come apart. There's, like, bits that come off. But it's that's not really that big of a deal, you know? As, as I'm um, cleaning and washing and everything, I do get a few of these, like, little fibers coming off. It's not perfect. But I know that when this, you know, comes to the end of its life, it's going to um, break down really easily and um, and not be sitting in landfill like till after I'm dead. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep looking out for more um, kind of biodegradable options in terms of sponges and scrubbies. Uh, but this one so far, um, I'm pretty happy with it, and I thought I'd share it with you. There's another one here. This is actually something that my mom crocheted for me uh, several years ago. I'm not even sure what kind of yarn she used. It looks really interesting. It looks like a reused um, like vegetable netting or something like that, which is really fascinating. And um, this is an amazing scrubby. Like this, anytime I really am having a hard time getting stuff, getting um, 
stubborn grease off of pots and pans. Um, this thing is far more useful than any synthetic sponge that I've ever used. So that's pretty great. Um, so I've been using this kind of uh, scrubby for like kind of washing dishes. Normally when I'm washing dishes, I would um, use a sponge, but if something is getting a little bit stubborn, I step in with one of these things. Now this is, um, it's plastic and it's getting a little bit grungy at the end and everything. When it finally um, comes to the end of its life, um, I am swapping it out for this nice wooden one that's got um, natural fibers and uh, you know much much better chance of actually breaking down um, instead of sticking around in landfill for a long time. Um, I had originally bought this in order to replace this eventually but then we found so many other uses around the house that this has started um, I mean it's been cleaning up messes on the floor it's been cleaning up muddy boots it's uh, this thing has been put to work already so um, I will probably get another one when this thing comes to the end of its life um, and then similar to these I got a, a wooden handled and it's like a, a metal wire brush so it's it's not perfectly completely biodegradable but it is I mean it is less plastic and it is one thing that um, you know I, I feel a little bit better about than, than trying to buy plastic. This I got for kind of like for scrubbing like um, wire racks and things in the oven. Um, I basically forget for getting a lot of like oven grease and, and really hard to get stuff off and I'm really happy with this so far. So um, and then finally <laughs> this toilet brush. Let me just tell you about uh, the history of toilet brushes in this house. We moved in here a um, little over a year and a half ago and I went out and got um, bathroom sets for, for each of the toilets. We have um, three different toilets in this house and for each one I got a little set from home base that was like a little plastic bin, uh, a little plastic um, liquid soap dispenser, and then a little toilet brush in its own little kind of like standing um, cup thing. And uh, in a year and a half, all three of those toilet brushes have broken. I don't know if our toilets are really hardcore. I don't know if I'm like a particularly aggressive house cleaner or something like that, but it's been really disappointing to go out and buy this like this cheap plastic stuff and um, have it break on me like so quickly. So um, I finally, when the last one finally died the other day, I went out and um, got myself this nice wood handled, natural bristle fiber um, toilet brush. They, um, it feels much more hardy. It feels like something that, you know, the, the neck isn't gonna snap off. Um, it is actually going to last a while. So um, I haven't actually used this yet. I purposely wanted to film this video um, before I used it so that I wouldn't be handling and waving around a dirty toilet brush in my dining room. So um, probably as soon as this video is over, I'm gonna go and clean my toilets because they need it. So. One last change that I'm making is thinking about the kind of soap that I buy and use. Um, I will, I'll do another review later to kind of go over some options for like uh, shower soaps, shampoos, um, toothbrushes, toothpastes, um, all that other kind of stuff. Um, there's a number of um, kind of personal toiletry things that um, I'm in the process of trying or I'm planning to try. So I'll do another review about kind of like personal hygiene products a little bit later. Um, but for today, about kind of like household hygiene, um, there's one thing um, in the, the same shop uh, where I shopped in town for uh, for these lovely wooden handled brushes, um, I also got this, uh, it's a red buoy carbolic soap. Now first of all it comes packaged in just a simple cardboard box that can be broken down and recycled and then it's just a simple um, bar of soap so it doesn't you know there's absolutely no plastic involved and this stuff is amazing anytime I mean uh, like it just it gets so much stuff out I use it for um, washing my hand wash like washing my um, 
kind of delicate bits of, of my hand wash. Um, I use it for well, just kind of any, lots of different kinds of household cleaning. Um, I can kind of rub it on a brush and scrub on something on the floor and get it out. Um, so you don't always have to have like a plastic packaged, you know, spray bottle or, or bottle of liquid soap. Um, this, you know, bar soap is actually a really great option and I highly recommend it. And then um, I know that, you know, it's you know, perfectly valid to still want to use uh, liquid soap in your home, um, especially like, you know, you want to put these little um, liquid soap dispensers um, at all of your sinks and kind of encourage everyone to keep their hands washed. Um, definitely keep on doing that. Um, this is one of those liquid hand dispensers that I mentioned that came, that originally came with a toilet brush. Um, and then I just found in the supermarket that they sell these one liter refills of liquid soap um, that are actually worth four, you know, small bottles of um, soap, of liquid soap dispenser. So um, it's actually, it's a really good option if you can find these in your local supermarket to just get these refills and use them in a refillable thing um, rather than always buying the like the little plastic soap dispensers every single time you run out. So that is my first product review. I hope that you are inspired by watching this the next time you go to the shops and to refill your household cleaning products. You think about buying uh, biodegradable items, things um, that can break down or that don't have to be thrown away, um, and really just try to consider more options um, to try to reduce the amount of plastic that you bring into your home. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.